Today we're going to be changing out those tired old rear drum brakes for a brand new set of rear disc brakes with this kit from Late Model Restoration. They give you everything from rotors to calipers, hoses, dust shields, park brake cables and all the hardware required to make your old Fox body stop like a brand new car. Before we get started, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown of what comes in this kit. So new caliper mounts, dust shields, new lines for the top of your axle, proportioning valve, 93 Cobra Master Cylinder. These are the hoses that mount to your axle and actually make your calipers serviceable. New calipers, new rotors, all of the park brake cables to swap over to a rear disc setup. And last but not least, couple bottles, a 75-140, and a little bit of friction modifier. Quick little side note here, folks. I didn't know what gear set was in this car. And once I got the tag off, I mean, you can tell by the tag, but you don't even need to look at the tag. You can actually get your car off the ground like this and figure out what gear set you have in your car, you know, within reason. So you can see here, I've got a, a paint pen mark on the pinion, okay? I've also made a paint pen mark on the outside of my axle. You do not have to have the drums and the wheels off to do this, okay? All you need is to get the back of your car off the ground and uh, you can do it with the tires and everything on. So what we're gonna do here is count how many times that pinion spins relative to one full spin of this axle, okay? So there's one, paint, one pinion turn two pinion turns, three pinion turns, and I'm almost at a full turn. So that is, this is where it gets approximate. I feel it's safe to say that this has a 308 gear set in the rear end of it.
Okay, folks, quick little uh, update for you here. So I noticed on this side that we've got a little bit of a leaky seal. Now, I planned ahead for this. I also got a, a rear seal kit and axle bearing kit. They come in pairs, so if you're doing one, you may as well do both. I had these just in case. They're not a terrible thing to have laying around on the shelf somewhere. So I'm going to go after changing these out. Now, the seals, you might be able to, like you can if you really want to get rowdy, get these out with a flat blade screwdriver. But a seal puller is makes your life a lot easier. As far as the bearing goes, you need a slide hammer and like a T bearing puller to get those out. I don't know any other way to get those out. You're, uh, you're going to be renting tools unless you got them or you know somebody that does. I'm also going to clean up the rear diff cover and splash some paint on it. I'm going to clean all these bolts up and the wire wheel. Clean this up too. Put it back on there. Little OEM tag, right? Um, buzz this off with a little bit of an abrasive wheel on my die grinder. And yeah, I'll sandblast the back side of it in my blast cabinet splash some paint on it so it's ready to go while i got the die grinder out i'm obviously going to clean up this now some people i don't know chris the infamous project and i talked about this i can't remember if we did on a video or not but we did definitely talk about it off of the air um some of these new diff covers and stuff that you can buy come with like a a bit of a paper gasket i've never ran them so i don't know maybe they work good i'm old school i still do the rtv so anyway, while I got the die grinder out, I'm going to buzz this surface off and clean it all up. I'm also going to clean this like flange up, right? Because it's all nasty. So get in here with, a, with some brake clean and a bit of a wire wheel, tidy this all up. So our new hardware has got a clean mating surface to go on. But anyway, stand by here, guys. I'm going to get these seals changed out and the bearings and uh, we'll get back to your regularly scheduled disc brake upgrade. And seals are in. I've got the diff cover hardware all cleaned up. Diff cover has been sandblasted and painted, and the diff, the mating surface for the diff cover is all cleaned up and ready to go. Now, I started this video late in the day and this whole rear disc brake swap. So it's now like 9:30 at night. I gotta get home for dinner. My wife and kids stopped by earlier. I don't know if they're on film or not. It was while I was doing a time lapse trying to get the e-brake cables out. But anyway, they've been here, checked on me. I gotta go home, kiss them goodnight. So anyway, we'll pick this back up tomorrow morning. We got a real good head start on like peeling all the old stuff out. Next steps are gonna be putting everything on. So see you guys in the morning. Morning folks, we're back at her. All right, time to start bolting some new parts onto this. I'm actually, I'm gonna start off with pulling the rear shocks, not pulling, but like knocking them off the diff so I can get a little bit more access in there. We got to start, we don't have to start, but like one of the components of this whole program is getting the soft lines and the mounts onto the diff. And pulling that rear shock is the easiest way to get at it because you got to drill some holes. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to get my bottle jack out and drop this thing down nice and easy so it doesn't fall off of the shocks. And uh, get after bolting all this gear onto the average fox.
folks, I wanted to just take a quick sec and explain what's going on here because it's kind of hard to tell when I'm doing a time lapse, but my apologies. I'm a one man band. That's kind of the, the best I can do at any rate. So I fully expected to drill this lower axle mount in order to accept this bolt and the tab that comes off of this soft line unit. However, I locked out. Okay. Now I, I've never been this lucky before my tab lined up and my hole lined up that's not always the case more often than not you have to like drill this hole out a little bit or mooch it out with a step bit all that said this worked out beautifully so i just threaded it to accept the bolt that's supplied in the kit however something i wanted to point out that explains the whole back and forth to the vise you notice that this female end is that accepts the, the hard brake line off the diff is pointed towards the back of the vehicle. These always fit like shit, okay? Like always. And anytime you're dealing with brake lines, the straighter shot you can get into something, the better because you're bending lines less and you're trying to get like threaded fittings to seal and all that good stuff. So if I was to just tighten this down and bolt it up, this is how the female end of this soft line would fit. Now I'll run you over and show you the other side here. So see how this guy's just a nice straight shot across the diff? Well, that's so I can get a straight shot with my hard line into this female fitting. So it just takes a little bit of not metal fab, but you know, like bending and beating on it with a hammer in the vise. So what I did is I just tightened down this bolt. I beat on the tab end to kind of get the curvature of this mount because this mount is not flat. Okay. It's kind of curved. And then in this little V cut here, I've stuffed this end in the vise and beat on this to bend it in so I can get that nice straight shot towards my hard line. Anyway, I mean, you do you at the end of the day, but this is just something I wanted to point out to you, I guess as a quick little tech tip or whatever you want to call it. The straighter shot you can get with your hard line going in here, the better off you'll be. Because again, these threads don't like to be off ever so slightly. And the least amount of bends you can put in that hard line, the better off you'll be. guys no rocket science here but I just wanted to point a couple of little things out here so we've got new hard lines supplied in the kit they have been shortened okay in order to go to our new soft line female connection on both ends so this I mean you can kind of logic your way through it right and just sort of trace the bends but um, for what it's worth the longer the two lines goes passenger side shorter line goes on the drivers and uh in my case they've kind of got this color coded the brass fitting brass colored fittings are going to go into your t and your red fittings are going to go to your soft line so essentially just peel everything off your old uh t here that comes off your diff um that was a little probably probably a little difficult for you guys to see me peel that off but anyway it's just a single bolt that uh, is bolted on the corner of your pumpkin there on your diff and then this guy um, goes up and ties into your your main brake line so you pull that bolt out and a couple of copper crush washers and the whole assembly comes out so I'm going to get after transferring these lines onto here essentially just rebuilding this we'll drop it back in the car tie everything into our soft lines and then uh Probably the next thing we'll get after putting our, our plates on here.
Okay, so new caliper mounts are on. Now, something I just wanted to point out is this kit recommends that you reuse the hardware, 30 year old hardware that your car came with. Well, I'm here to tell you, the threads just pulled right through on me. So I was a little reluctant at first to even try it. And uh, anyway, gave it a whirl. And when I went to torque the bolts, pulled the threads right out of the, the nut. Yeah, this one. There's nothing left. So anyway, um, I'm running new hardware. Now, if you run into the same situation, just word to the wise, use a Stover nut. Um, I don't even know if I'd go nylock. Definitely something that can handle, you know, some temp and elements and everything else. So these Stover nuts are, it's like a nylock without the nylon in it, right? So they taper down and tighten on and stay tight. Uh, you do not want to mess around with this bracket, right? This is what your caliper bolts to, and uh, this needs to stay in place. So, just a quick little note on that. My uh, original hardware was no good, so we used some new stuff. Stover nuts for the win. So as I shine this uh, rotor up before I put it on, I noticed in the kit, which I should mention, like there's no um, there's no real instructions, at least that I was provided. All right, so um, you should probably have someone that's done this before give you a hand with it, just so you don't get uh, kind of lost in the mix, but. Um, the reason I bring that up is in the hardware kit, there's these aluminum rings, right? I was like, huh, I wonder what these are for. So they've been on my mind the whole time. And uh, this actually, as a side note, it's always one of the reasons why I tell everybody, like, go through all your hardware and, like, see what's what. Because, you know, while you're working through the, the install, some of these things will pop into your brain and go, oh, I wonder if that's what that's for. So anyway, I put the other rotor on like so. Actually, kind of a mess to figure out where the holes are. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty good space right here, right? And yeah, they don't really, center on those lugs all that well so I'm like well I wonder if that's what this guy's for and now look at that now we're centered in there right with little to no movement so maybe I don't know if LMR is going to see this video or not but maybe they can comment on this and let the folks know I assume that's what this is for it only makes sense, but uh, again, there's no instructions, so I don't know officially. Anyway, that's where that's gonna go in my install. And uh, yeah, I can't see it causing any grief, even if that's where it doesn't go. But anyway, just wanted to point that out to everybody that uh, this is something that was a little bit of a head scratcher for me as to where it was gonna apply, but it seems to fit there quite well. Okay, folks, another quick little, uh, Word of the wise, tech tip, whatever you want to call it. So the kit includes these shims, okay? One for each side. And I thought, huh, I wonder if it's just for different applications. And truth be told, it very well may be. However, on the other one, I learned that in my specific situation, this shim needs to be run. I can't imagine how it would be 
any different for any other standard 8.8 .8 that's out there. So, but again, no instructions, right? So I don't know, uh, you're just kind of going by feel. Anyway, the only other weird part is uh, for whatever reasons, the, the bolts that go from the caliper mount to the caliper, the heads are different sizes, one side to the other. I don't know if that's a manufacturing defect or what, but I'll just give you a quick little kind of bird's eye view of what's going on here. So if you were to bolt, let me pull these pads in here. If you were to bolt this up without the shim, like the mount literally hits the rotor. So I guess that's a dead giveaway, right? That this shim's got to be ran in there. So if you put the shim in, I think you should be able to get a view there. You pretty much center your caliper mount between your rotor, which is what you want, right? For even pad wear. So the shim is a requirement to run on these, all right? Outside of that, I think everything else is pretty straightforward. Don't forget to lube up your sliders, okay? Thin film of grease on here and all four corners here. So your pads slide nice and easy. This actually is something, I don't know, maybe boring for some, but you should pull your pads off and put this stuff on like once or twice a year, at least, especially if you're driving your car in any kind of environmental conditions, okay? Because this is, without this stuff, your pads seize metal to metal and nothing slides and you start wearing pads out. So for whatever that's all worth. <laughs>
get rid of the self adjuster and then I got to get under the hood in order to install this new master and the proportioning valve. So what I'm going to do is temporarily put the wheels on, get the stands out from underneath it, drop the car down, then we can access all that stuff. All right, real quick here, guys. So got my rear tires on and uh, I noticed right away that my park brake cable is hitting my tire. I'm thinking, huh, what am I gonna do here? And now you can see this guy hanging here. I'm gonna show you one of these on the table. So when I unboxed all this, I had these two brackets and I'm thinking to myself, what are these for, right? Great big eyelet too. And to confuse me a little bit more, I've got a whole kit worth of power steering parts, right? That are gonna go onto this car and I'm like, is this the high pressure line bracket? I'm like, no, that doesn't look right. Anyway, I just kind of left them sitting here on the table. And then when this all happened, I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if this like bolts to something, right? Well, I, I think this is what it's for anyway. It seems to work quite geniusly. So that guy, I think you run one of your bolts through from your rear sway bar and this holds your park brake cable off of your tire. <laughs> um, Again, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. So uh, anyway, it's what I'm gonna be using it for. And there are two. So I mean, logic would tell you that this must be what it's for, right? So anyway, uh, don't forget these, I guess, if that's what they're for, or you run into the same situation I am right now. You can see I got this park brake cable pulled down right now. So I can put that one on the passenger side, but uh, yeah, I think that's what they're for. Keep your park brake cables off your rear tires. Alright folks, the e-brake handle in all her glory. Now, you've seen me kind of buzzing some things off here. I just wanted to stop and take a sec and show you kind of what's going on. Now, before I do, I should mention Late Model Resto has a great video on their YouTube page on a step-by-step -step how to do this, okay? I'm sorry folks, I'm one guy on the tools, one guy on the camera, like I don't have multiple people helping me here, so I can only do the best I can, but Late Model Resto on the other hand has all that and they do a great job of showing you how to do this. But in case there's something that they don't show that I maybe give you a better angle on, I'm just gonna try and explain what's going on here. So what we've done here is we've buzzed off essentially a full length of this clock spring that was on here, okay? So I've made a cut here and I've cut, well, I took two runs at it to get this guy off here and then I cut here. So that's all been removed. I also removed this piece which used to live right here. Okay so I cut that off and what that does is it allows your emergency brake handle to lay flat when you release it fully. Okay so you remove this tab and then the final stage that makes this all pull together is we're going to weld this paw right here to this tooth, the second gear tooth, okay? And what that does is it removes the self-adjusting nature that these handles have that works congruently with the old drum brake system. We don't need that anymore. We're getting rid of it all. So we need to weld this guy solid and uh, then we're in good shape. Now, not everybody's gonna have these tools laying around. So if you're thinking about doing a rear disc brake swap and you don't have a welder or a cutoff wheel or Sawzall or whatever, um, maybe plan ahead. Now, I will also say though, 
don't be that guy or gal that doesn't do the e-brake okay e-brake you need in lots of different situations and there's so many foxes running around out there that haven't had this done to it they've got the rear disc brake swap but they got no e-brake well this isn't that hard okay the hardest part honestly is getting this whole mechanism out of the car getting this cable off can be a real pain in the ass anyway take your time plan ahead and do this right and i'm telling you it works flawlessly okay my coupe i did all this with it and it's great so anyway stand by here guys i'm just going to throw a quick little tack on here with my welder and then we'll be going back in with the handle okay and a final look at the tack job i got a little rowdy with my welder so i took the grinder to it i didn't need to but i did just to flatten it out so again this paw is welded to the second tooth in from the end on this gear now next step is this is our new point of adjustability all right to adjust our emergency brake so we got to pull the old individual front cable out and install this guy and this is obviously gonna run up in here like so a little hard to do with one hand but I think you get the hint we got a brand new grommet to keep the weather and the critters out and then a couple of tees to pick from um, I think these are for different years if I'm not mistaken in this 88 we're gonna be running this longer one but anyway yeah this is gonna go on here and uh, going to ultimately tie into our two individual cables that run to each respective side so i'm going to get this guy installed and then after that we're off to the front of the car to do the master cylinder and our proportioning valve all right install is reverse of removal right so got the new cable plugged in here got our new seal and we're going to drop all this in don't forget to plug your brake light that pops up in the dash back in. Make sure you can tuck your little seal in there and get it pushed into place. It's kind of a clip style seal. Okay. All right, guys, I'll just give you a quick look here at the uh, finished product so you can cross compare if you're in the middle of doing this yourself right i haven't adjusted it fully yet um that's why that back nut isn't fully pinched up against the front nut but gives you an idea all right now we're going to move to the front of the vehicle and in order to do so we got to bench bleed the master so process is fairly self-explanatory they do provide instructions on this essentially we gotta install these two plastic uh block off plates here and here we're gonna fill the reservoir and then we need to depress the piston and watch the air bubbles come out and essentially you go in and out in and out in and out until you got no more air bubbles it's a slower process than that but you know, something blunt and not sharp so you don't damage the inside of your, your piston here. I'm just using a quarter inch extension with some heavy duty duct tape on the end of it, right? Fits in there. You can see how it moves, right? So I'm gonna get this guy filled up with brake fluid. We'll bench bleed him. And then uh, we'll stop or get up top of the vehicle and start putting this stuff in. Okay, master is bled. And how you know it's bled is you don't notice any more air coming up through the reservoir and you can only depress the piston about an eighth of an inch or so okay now we got to get this in the car we also got to get the proportioning valve in the car which is going over here but we got to remove the old master and there's a couple little steps to this i mean removing the master is fairly simple you've got one bolt on either side of it that goes to your booster we're going to remove these hard lines we're going to unplug our sensor and we also need to gut the proportioning valve 
All of this sounds very technical, but it's really not. I'm gonna try my best to get you in under the hood here with me. I'll get my light and stuff and try and show you, but um, as far as gutting this goes, you just you know get a great big wrench on this guy here, um, or a crescent wrench, whatever you got available to you. This threads out, and uh, then there's a spring and a plunger in there. We're just gonna pull those off, and there's a new dummy plug that we get in the kit that we're gonna throw in there this guy here and essentially all that's doing is removing that proportioning valves ability to proportion fluid and then we're gonna install this in the line that goes to the rear brakes and that is how you're now gonna adjust your rear braking proportionality is through this dial again sounds technical but it's not you just play with it a little bit go out for a few drives you obviously don't want your back brakes locking up so go out if they lock up dial it down a little bit but anyway that's all for after when you're test driving I'm all right folks so the lines are like welded into this proportioning valve so um i'm gonna be busting out all kinds of heavy artillery to try to get these things loose but essentially we got to get both of these lines off of here uh, without causing too much damage because we, we need to reuse one of them anyway um, stand by here there's gonna be some very bad words and some bang knuckles going on here so folks I promise you you wouldn't believe me unless I showed you the arsenal of tools that were involved in getting this back line off. Uh, like, let me get this line off and then I'll show you. Like, it has been an absolute time. Well, and I'll show you the line too. Holy. This is one of those situations where you say to your better half, yeah, I'm just going to be in and out in an hour. Well, <laughs> I don't eat, I, I've eaten up at least an hour and a half trying to get this thing out. I don't know if you guys ever seen my pooch. This is buckaroo. Anyway, um, yeah, like heat was involved. Um, check out this thinking on your toes. I got a crow foot on the end of my little impact, like just trying to, but hey buddy, just trying to bust any of this rust loose. I mean, there is absolutely nothing left of the uh, the head of this guy. Like it's rounded right off. Vice grips, pliers, like once I started running out of actual square, hi bud, square, uh, you know, pieces to bite with my wrenches and stuff. I just, yeah, I went all in and uh, vice grips and pliers were involved. So that is the kind of stuff that they don't show you on, you know, standard YouTube installs. <laughs> and I guess I didn't show you either, but trust me, uh, I think a lot of you would think less of me after the color colorful language and, and tools that were thrown. What an absolute disaster. Anyway. The saving grace of all this is we do not need to reuse this back line. Thank goodness, because it's absolutely trashed. The front line we're going to reuse, but the back line we're going to replace with this system here. That's all part of the kit, okay? And it's from Maxim Motorsports. Maxim Motorsports provides you with instructions on how to do all this. So I don't want to bore you too much, folks. But there is one thing I want to mention. There's a measurement you need to take, okay, with this new master cylinder. And it all has to do with like the piston depth and the stud that comes out of your booster. You have to take these measurements, do some subtraction and get your stud that comes out of your booster. You actually have to adjust it. In my case, uh, sorry, this stud right here. Okay. You can see the threads on there. This threads in and out. I've got to dial mine in. And the reason you got to do that is, well, the master cylinders, this one to the new one, 
are different. And if you don't dial, if you don't take your measurements appropriately, and in my case, if I don't dial that stud back in, I'm going to be applying brakes with the pedal all the way out. That's obviously bad, right? You're driving around with your brakes on. So make sure you pay attention to these instructions. They explain very clearly how to do it all. I took my measurements here. I've definitely got to make some changes. So make sure you pay attention to that too. I'm going to dial my stud in a little bit. Everybody's situation is going to be slightly different. So I won't bore you with all that, but I'm going to dial my stud in and then we'll get after putting the new lines on and putting the new master cylinder in the car. All right, folks. And last but not least here, I almost forgot. We got to gut the proportioning valves. So bear with me here. We'll get this guy opened up. Okay. Need some pliers. Got her. And then simply thread the supplied plug back on. Here's a quick look at the final product. Everything's all tightened up and ready to race. Um, yeah, this kit works quite well. You know, it's, uh, I guess at first blush, when you look at it all, the bends and the twists and the whatever, you maybe think to yourself, holy, how am I going to make this work? But honestly, it's pretty straightforward, right? So the next step is we got to break into the rear line over here. And we're going to be installing this Ford Racing proportioning valve. This is by no means rocket science, folks. The only way you can do screw this up is to put it in backwards. Don't put your in in the right direction and you're out in the right direction. Other than that, straightforward. We're going to be putting it in like so. And this is our dial to adjust our, our rear bias, braking bias. And we got some fittings here that are going to line up with the stock lines on the car. All right, guys, pretty self-explanatory here. We're just going to take the center section out. Sticky lines. I guess if it wasn't clear to you already, out is going this way. In's coming this way, in and out. And there you have it. Final, final. Everything bolted up. Well, almost. I still got some loose ends to tie up. I got to get the emergency brake cables pulled back from the tires. I've got to put the drive shaft on. I did put fluid in the diff. Um, I never filmed that, but I think everybody knows how to put fluid in their diff. Um, now, essentially, the fun begins. And what I mean by that is, obviously, this whole brake system needs to be bled. And while it's being bled, you need to keep your eyes peeled for leaks. There's pretty much a 99% chance you're going to have a leak somewhere. They're just, it never fails, okay? We just messed with all kinds of connections up here at the master. Chances are we're going to have a leak somewhere. We messed around with all types of brake line connections in the rear. Could have a leak somewhere in there. You never know. But they're not going to really necessarily pre present themselves until you're bleeding the brakes. You might find one early up by the master, just with it being full of fluid and it's kind of gravity draining itself. You may find a leak up here, but anyway, it's not going to be until you pressurize the system and you start bleeding this thing down. Now, <clears throat> brake bleeding, I think for the most part, everybody kind of knows that. Um, you can do it with a friend. You can do it by yourself if you got like a vacuum bleeder or whatever. Anyway, um, I guess the thing that I stress the most is just make sure you bleed your brakes properly. Okay, like brakes are key. It's way more key than going fast. So make sure you got all the air out of your lines and uh, then you can get out and test drive it and enjoy your car. Now, I did mention this proportioning valve and how I was gonna touch on it a little bit later. Well, 
again, you, you just do not have that proportioning valve ran wide open, okay? Like backed all the way out. I mean, these cars are very, very light as is, and the rear end especially is really light. So now that you've like amplified the braking capabilities of this car, this thing will lock up quick. So just beware of that. Like don't go out there and just pile on the brakes. It'll be like locking the back brake up on a dirt bike. You'll be in the rhubarb real fast. So take your time with that. You know, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, don't want anybody out there getting hurt. But essentially that sums up a rear disc brake swap in a Fox body. It is a very um, nice addition to these cars, okay? It's probably the best way that I could sum that up. They just like pretty much stop on a dime. Now, obviously these cars don't have ABS, so you can't just lean on them like you can a brand new vehicle, but getting rid of those drums, which are awful, they fade fast, especially under spirited driving, going to a rear disc is just, yeah, it, it changes the, the enjoyment you can get out of one of these cars. So I highly do recommend it, all right? Um, my coupe has it, my vert doesn't, the vert, yeah, you don't want to be stopping quick in that car. Maybe once, if you're lucky, and uh, the second time, not happening. So anyway, highly recommend this. Um, anyway, folks, I'm gonna leave this one here. I hope this video helps. There's lots more to come on this car, okay? I got boxes and boxes of stuff to install on this car. So stay tuned if you're enjoying the Average Fox content. And if this video helped you or you think it might help somebody else, please share it along. That's why I do these videos to try to give back and help the uh, community. So thanks a lot for tagging along, folks. I really appreciate you, and I'll catch you in the comments. Take care. Bye for now.